What's up guys, it's Q. Um, just wanted to do a quick, uh, I guess, big review. Um, it's, this is for all my graffiti nerds out there. <clears throat> if you're like me and you truly appreciate graffiti art, um, it's really important, I think, to help support other artists, especially those that you look towards and you know who inspire you. So I, every time I see it, like a book put out or magazine, I try to buy it not only like to keep for myself and own a piece of that kind of graffiti history because you know I don't think graffiti artists are going to be really uh, cataloged in the future um, like classical artists are. I think it's really important to kind of just own that piece and you never know when you could run into these kind of people in the street and at events and stuff and it's always cool to have something you can get signed or something like that so that's always cool. Um, I understand a lot of my viewers are um, younger and might not have um, all the money in the world to just go out and buy stuff on a whim but you know magazines are five dollars usually and you know they have a ton of pictures ton of articles that you can kind of read and see what inspires the artists that you love and so here I have some of my favorite issues of juxtapose and random magazine random magazines um so yeah juxtapose magazine I really um I like their articles and a lot of their work in here is really just top notch and they feature a lot of graffiti and tattoo artists that I really love and they also have information on shows and uh, books so you could always buy those um, yeah this one had this issue had uh, Risk in it and I actually got to meet Risk before at a gallery one of his uh, shows and uh, he's a very nice person and um, just really down to earth and he's willing to talk with me for like 30 minutes just about graffiti and you know how the scene has changed and whatnot and we talked about you know people that we might both know and stuff because um, he works with a lot of artists and I really appreciate that he just doesn't stay within a uh, graffiti even though he's one of the OGs he branches out into fine arts and stuff um, Here's uh, one of the first issues I bought. Uh, it has Doze Green on the cover. Doze Green was like a b-boy, and then he started um, he started drawing and uh, painting. And I really like his work. A lot of his line work is what inspires me when I do actually go and draw figures and stuff like that, because I really like that abstract kind of style. Um, interesting thing is, I actually went to Las Vegas uh, last Thanksgiving. And I went to the Aria, and he actually painted the tram station that they had going back and forth in between hotels, and I thought that was really cool. So if you're in Vegas, you should go check that out. Um, this this issue had Augur in it. Let me see if I could find a picture really quick. I mean, you guys all know Augur, MSK, AWR, really dope artist. He has that kind of like creature organic style and I think that's really cool when you can pull it off because um, I'm used to more like traditional like uh, European style graffiti which is what I love uh, for example dime um, I love like 3d art and just like geometrical styles but when people can get down and do like kind of organic creatures and organs and pus coming out and make it look realistic especially with spray paint I think that's super cool um, I have the Watchmen, and you guys might be like, well, that's not graffiti, you know, why are you bringing that up right now? Because comic book art actually has a lot to do with graffiti in terms of color and structure, and also they use lettering, you know, they, they write all the bubbles and stuff like that, and that kind of helps you with your spacing and ideas, and, you know, I think a lot of times graffiti artists forget that it's interesting to have characters, not just straight up letters. Um, I like it when people incorporate characters into the actual piece instead of just off to the side. I think that's really cool. Like let's say you have a letter O or something and you could you know, think of a million things that are circular in shape and you could just plug that in and it could represent your O and it's just something different and keeps it fresh. So that's the reason why I just showed you The Watchmen. I should go out and buy some more comic books but uh, I'm too lazy and I don't really know that many cool comics. I'm not that into it, but I, I do know certain superheroes, which I do look towards. Um, another book I bought is Graffiti Planet. 
Um, I actually bought this one from Urban Outfitters just because I saw, you know, really quick. And it has graffiti from all over the world, like uh, this one from Korea representing. Um, I thought it's really cool to study different uh, cultures have different styles in their lettering if you check it out. And I think that's uh, very important to know because no offense, but if you're kind of ignorant in some of the graffiti um, culture, you might look at some uh, lettering and think it's toy and mistakenly. And uh, that's why I think it's really important to study up because, you know, you see work like this and, you know, like this, I believe this is Tat's crew, then it's obvious to you that that's cool and, you know, that's, you know, takes a lot of skill, but other things might be a little harder to digest. Um, like uh, the Pixiao, I don't know if I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly, but that's people in Brazil and stuff and they tag and all that, they use like symbols. And to you, that might just be like, oh, well, that's just a really whack tag or whatever, or he's just defacing property or whatever. But if you actually zoom out, you look at the whole picture and you see where this is, they like climb, you know, billboards that are on top of skyscrapers and stuff like that. And they tag that area. And it's more about the location they tag. Just how, you know, in LA, we got heaven spots like hanging off of freeways. And, you know, the tag might be whatever, even to me, but... You know, just the fact that they're willing to risk their life just to scrawl their name out there is really impressive. And, you know, it's, it, it completely changes what you think of, you know, the actual writing itself. Um, this is an Urban Playground book. Um, if you guys don't know Urban Playground, uh, you should check them out. They also support a lot of artists. Hey, look, Doe's Green. But um, this book had a lot of the artists that I like. Uh, I think uh, Dave Cho's in here. Um, who else? Sam Flores. He has this iconic kind of character with elongated proportions. I really like his characters. Um, some photography and stencil work. And it's, it's definitely worthwhile to check them out. Especially books like this that showcase a bunch of different artists from different cities. I think it's really cool to appreciate different styles and different uh, ways of um, executing street art. Um, this is another cool artist. I forget his name, but um, he kind of works with shadows and he uh, draws shadows on the ground and kind of different characters with that. And um, yeah, I mean, who, who would have thought to paint on the ground, you know? And generally in graffiti culture, it's all about getting the highest place. So, I mean, I, I thought that was really cool, and this book is definitely worth it. Um, here's the first book I bought, and no, it didn't come with this weird cover. That's how much I cared about this book, where I made my own cover for this book so it wouldn't get damaged. But it's actually a Graffiti Planet. Um, it's from the same authors as this book, Street World. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen the book and the cover. The cover is actually a pull-out poster, which is really cool. I have somewhere. Um, but this book, obviously, because of how huge it is, is going to have some really cool artists. But um, the problem with collective books that are this big, I think, is that um, you end up with a lot of art that you might not care about or you might not appreciate. So uh, it might be interesting to just take a look at at a at a bookstore or a library or something like that but in, in actuality something like this for I think I bought it for like 40 bucks or something might not be worth it um, the articles in here are okay they're not the greatest and usually when I buy a book like this I look at the pictures anyway so the writing in it has to be pretty phenomenal for me to you know actually sit down and read it because I feel like with the graffiti culture it should be just about appreciating what's there and um, sometimes the backstories are a little bit you know hyped up and you know it, it really doesn't add anything to the actual piece itself so um, yeah I would I would I wouldn't recommend buying this one I would recommend more just looking at it um, I mean it's really cool if you want just a big kind of like encyclopedia of styles so you can keep your uh, style like really uh, varied and uh, interesting I guess by changing it up every time but in terms of just uh, 
having a piece of art, I think it's better to buy uh, just uh, individual artist works. Um, yeah, so I guess with I could just lump that together with um, this one. So that one was Graffiti World. I believe they have a Graffiti World Women's Edition, which was really cool because a lot of the female artists aren't really known as much, but they're just as good or sometimes even better. Like one of my favorite graffiti artists, uh, Silhouette, she does uh, pinup girl type of drawings uh, influenced by Alphonse Mucha and then that whole art movement of Art Nouveau. And I thought that was really cool. But um, that book along with Graffiti World are pretty good. But this one, Street, Street World, was not that great. Um, it has a lot of fashion pictures, which is cool, I guess, if you're into photography. I am into photography, but I'd rather look at photos online than in a book because it's, I don't know, it, it gets kind of uh, stuck up, I guess. Esoteric is the word I would use um, because all these pictures are really nice composition and, of course, look really good uh, printed in here. But I'd rather look at like the artist's work or procedures because I'm trying to learn from it, not just uh, look at it. So, I mean, this, I say, is just like a really big art magazine. It's not necessarily, you know, looking at the, the graffiti culture, per se. Like, they have pictures of lowriders and shoes, which is always cool. But, again, I don't know. This was, this was 42 bucks, and, again, I think it's more of, like, a magazine quality that you might not want to, like, look, look at more than once. So, that's what I have to say about that. <clears throat> this book, Banksy, Wall and Peace, had, this book was one of the main inspirations that got me into stenciling more serious stencils. Before when I did stencils, it was just kind of like my name or something to quickly spray on stickers so I can get a lot of stickers done. But this actually inspired me from uh, the, the story, the origin, the origin origination, the origin of uh, Banksy's works. And his writing, I don't know if he wrote it, I'm pretty sure he did, but his writing is one of the few writing that I can actually sit down and read. He's basically a genius to me. I mean, he talks about uh, his societal scope and outlook and a lot of the reasons why he did the works that he did and how he did it and what happened to him and stuff and I think in terms of his work it's all about the story it's not necessarily what he did because anyone can stencil nowadays with Photoshop and Illustrator and you know you can have machines cutting your stencils or if you're like Mr. Brainwash or whatever you can have other people cutting your stencils and say that they're they're your work or whatever but I think his genius beyond, you know, Obey and um, Mr. Brainwash is actually where he puts his work. He puts his work in very strategic locations and his messages are basically giant political, anti-political slogans, I should say, because they go against the government. And it, it's really interesting to see how and why um, he developed his artwork in the way he did and um, I even heard a story that Banksy started stenciling because he sucked at graffiti um, You guys can go ahead and tell me if that's true or not But I thought that was interesting and you know, of course his stencil work is top-notch and Banksy and Logan Hicks are basically my two reasons why I started getting into stenciling um, Okay, and with that I have um, three I guess you can call them books, that I bought yesterday. One I saw, I instantly had to buy was El Mac and Retina. Their work is amazing and just the fact that, you know, they have two different styles yet they work together so well. Uh, I really like that, how Retina does the lettering in the background and El Mac has like this crazy style that he uses fat caps and creates ripples in his artwork. So, um, yeah, I mean, I just thought that was really cool. I haven't really uh, encountered that type of style anywhere else, but that's dope. 
Um, yeah, so...